Hi everyone, Andrew here. Well, we are about three weeks into this quarantine that we're having here in Idaho. I know for many states and others out there, this has been a quite a bit longer stay at home at this point. But just in uh, thinking about the last few weeks, I realized that for many of us, this is a big change of pace. Uh, perhaps for some, it's really increased the speed of where they're working and the intensity has ramped up, especially for those who are in health care. But perhaps for others, this is an opportunity for them to stay at home, to uh, slow down that pace, perhaps if they are working from home and have uh, not that commute time that they usually have, or maybe their hours are cut or they've been uh, sent home off the job. So it's a tough reality, but it does afford us, many of us, the opportunity to reflect more closely and carefully on how we deal with time. I have a text that uh, I really got blindsided by when I was reading in the scripture just recently, and this is in John chapter 9, verse 4. And uh, Jesus offers this instruction to his disciples. He says, We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Verse 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. You know, when I took stock of this text as a young pastor just starting out i was impressed with the idea that jesus is telling us to take every single opportunity we have to honor him and serve others and that meant i had to cram frantically into every single minute of every day the most activity for god's glory possible as much ministry as i could possibly pack in there I was going to take advantage of it. And looking back, I can see how even though I felt like I was productive, there was a consequence. I felt listless. I felt tired all the time. I felt burned out. And perhaps a different lens is needed for this text. I'm thinking of just a couple chapters down, John chapter 11 in verses 5 going down to verse 8 and 9. I'm going to start to give some context here in verse 5. It says, Now Jesus loved Mary, loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Uh, just to, by way of summary here, earlier on in this chapter, Lazarus falls ill and he's given a message that Lazarus is quite possibly on his deathbed there, and Jesus realizes the situation, but because he realizes the situation and he loves both Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, he delays. It says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. Are, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, and here's the punchline. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This really plays into the text we talked about earlier in John 9 because the imagery is the same. The illustration is very similar. And Jesus sets this 12-hour deadline in this context as well. The earlier time in John chapter 9, we could think of that daylight illustration as symbolizing our lives from the beginning stage of our lives as children all the way to the evening stage of our lives during the golden years and onward all the way up to night which is an apt symbol of death there is a limited time frame for what we can experience and do but here 
Jesus sees the limited time frame looming up ahead of him. Lazarus is ill. He has very little time left. And yet, what does he do? He doesn't jump in frantically to cram in as much journeying towards Bethany as he can. Instead, he waits. In fact, he seems more relaxed than ever. There's no hurry in his demeanor or plans whatsoever. And it's clear that he's not doing this out of ignorance or apathy. He's doing this because he loves Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. There's a greater purpose to what he is doing here for God's glory and for his kingdom. And I feel like this is a lesson for all of us. Back uh, in those frantic days when I was trying to cram, cram, cram as a young pastor, looking back, I'm realizing that a lot of those things were playing into my perfectionism and weren't actually of consequence. They were minor things. They were things that people wouldn't actually notice or even feel were important if they ended up getting laid aside. There were a lot of little things that I felt were building my pride and were playing into my perfectionistic, detailed spirit when I wasn't actually carefully considering. And here, we have that opportunity to carefully consider what will actually be important for us to get into our day. What will actually be significant in our schedules. And the best way to get a handle on that, my friends, I earnestly believe is to look at our days, our hours, our minutes in light of eternity. What will actually be the best way to reach this person for Christ and actually nurture that friendship with him and really build up God's kingdom in this situation? Focusing on people, focusing on relationships, focusing on how can I put in my bank of memories those things that will help build up not only my character, but those around the, the characters of those around me and help us truly be prepared and ready and waiting expectantly for God's kingdom when Jesus comes in the clouds. These are big questions and mulling over them when we have the chance, and even just making time for them, quite honestly, is the best way to work while it is day. Thank you.